Hi, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, sorry I didn't get a video out to you guys last weekend. I was just not in the headspace for it for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. Well, I kind of have a feeling as to why. It is because of the subject matter. I mean, this is the video I was going to do last weekend. Now, as you guys know, or at least I'm, you guys probably have at least an inkling, I like to keep things positive on this channel, you know, um, put in my sense of humor when I can, and just you know, have it just generally be upbeat. Uh, you know, that's what music does for me, is it, it's, it's an upbeat thing for me, a, a positive thing. But this subject kind of leans toward the negative. Uh, it's not mean-spirited, because that's a line I'm not going to cross. I just don't want to be mean-spirited, unless it's totally tongue-in-cheek and totally for the sake of being funny, which will be clear if and when I do it. But uh, yeah, this does kind of lean a little bit toward the negative you know, all day long. It's now like two o'clock in the afternoon when I'm doing this on Sunday, and I was going to do it Saturday morning. But anyway, I finally decided to go ahead and do it, uh, because those of you uh, out there who are people of principle, and you'll understand what I mean as I go on with this video, uh, maybe will find it useful. So now uh, let me preface what uh, the main subject of this video is by talking a little bit about the words that I use to close each episode of my uh, channel here. Life's too short to be a music snob. And uh, basically what I mean by that is I like to consider myself the kind of person who's not afraid to try and listen to anything, as I'm sure I've said on this channel a couple of times before. Uh, of course, having enough hours in the day to listen to everything is uh, the challenging part. If uh, you were to come up to me and ask me what's the biggest guilty pleasure in my music collection, I would honestly have a hard time answering that question because I don't think I really have any guilty pleasures. Uh, I don't think anybody should feel guilty or ashamed of anything they like to listen to, because that's really one of the most beautiful things about music is there's really no logic or reason to why we end up loving the music that we do. I mean, that, that's the beauty of it, as, as I said. One of my favorite lines in the movie Almost Famous is when Lester Bangs, who's played by Philip Seymour Hoffman, basically implies that we don't find our favorite music, our favorite music finds us. And I love to think of it that way. I mean, really, we can all name our five favorite artists or albums or songs, but we'd have a hell of a time explaining why they're our five favorites, when you think about it. I don't listen to the radio, I don't pay attention to the billboard charts, uh, except when I want to see how highly one of my favorite albums might be ranked that particular week. Um, so honestly, popularity, the popularity of an artist or an album or whatever, doesn't influence my listening at all, except in the case when all of the YouTubers that I follow are giving unanimously positive reviews of a particular album or artist. Uh, in that case, I'll, I'll be very compelled to check it out. So uh, Now, I'll admit that there are a lot of artists out there that I just haven't been compelled enough to try delving into it all. I mean, lack of time is the biggest reason. I mean, I'd love to have enough hours in the day. But uh, another thing is that I have listened to a lot of music over the years, and the one bad thing about listening to so much music is the more you listen to, the more a particular artist has to stand out in some way for you to really pay attention to it. I mean, honestly, it all really starts to blend together. At least that's, you know, that's the experience that I've had. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love music, but too much of anything, as they say, is not necessarily a good thing. So yeah, I've, I've just become a little more selective and just decided that if I'm meant to really love an artist, you know, as uh, Lester Bangs suggested, it'll find me. You know, I just can't be out there all at all hours, you know, trying to find it. It's going to find me. I just have to have faith in that. But one thing I can say with complete honesty is there is not one artist out there that I've ever hated just to hate them. Uh, you know, or just to follow the crowd or whatever. Um, Nickelback is a good example. They get a whole lot of hate on the internet and everywhere else. Uh, just just for being Nickelback, it seems. Uh, now, I am actually not a Nickelback listener. I've never been, you know, they're one of the artists. I've just never been compelled to try listening to them. There's nothing I've read or heard about them that's made me want to listen to them. So I am totally neutral on Nickelback. Uh, maybe one of these days I'll try them out. But uh, that's where, and then and that's where the life's too short to be a music snob kind of thing comes in again, is you can't, you can't just hate an artist just to hate them or just because everybody else hates them. It's like, how do you know that there's a song somewhere deep down inside of Train's discography, for instance, that could end up being one of your favorite songs of all time? But uh, kind of on the opposite side of that fence is um, there are some artists out there that uh, I listen to and 
genuinely enjoy, in spite of all the hate that they get out there on the internet and uh, and elsewhere. Uh, the Eagles are a good example of that. They get they seem to get a lot of crap just for being a soft rock band, and I actually like them. I was a casual fan. Um, for quite a while, but then when I inherited my sister's CD collection, uh, she had, what, three or four of their CDs in there, I've just come to appreciate them more. So yeah, I've said it many times before, and I'll say it many times again, life's too short to be a music snob. Uh, don't let anybody shame you or make you feel guilty or awkward for listening to anything that you like to listen to. So, uh, but anyway, having said all that, uh, now we're getting into the, uh, the meat and potatoes of uh, today's episode. Uh, there are a few artists out there that you will not find in my collection uh, for specific reasons not relating to their music. Now, I always do my very best to separate the art from the artist, but, you know, there are a handful of artists out there that are so outspoken in their socio-political beliefs, mostly, that, uh, well, it just makes it really difficult. And uh, that's where... I think that, you know, there are artists out there like uh, Weird Al Yankovic is a big, good, good example of this. Um, they have the right idea where they keep their socio-political beliefs and their personal beliefs completely separate from their artistic identity. Uh, and Al, you will notice if you go and read, I mean, I've read every interview of Al and every, you know, legitimate news story about Al that I've ever happened across. And he never, he takes great pains to never talk about what he thinks about politics, religion, uh, social issues, anything like that. And I mean, it, it's pragmatic, you know, you, you don't want to lose potentially half your audience by uh, saying you come down on, you know, one side or the other on a particular issue. So uh, yeah, that's one of the things I've come to appreciate about him in my ad adulthood is, uh, you know, he's taking a very pragmatic approach to that. And and also for him, it's a an additional thing because his music and his humor is specifically designed to make people have fun. It's for fun, it's to make people laugh, and the last thing that a comedian especially really wants to do is to, uh, you know, to cite himself on a particular issue. So, now uh, several of the artists that are on this list that I'm about to read off to you uh, are on here because of their political beliefs, uh, but lest you think that I am uh, against any and all Republican or conservative-leaning uh, artists, uh, that's not the case. I mean, there are probably some, there there could be several uh, artists in my collection that I happen to like who happen to also be Republican or conservative. Uh, there's only one that I really know about, and that is Five for Fighting, John Androsik. Uh, my sister really enjoyed him, and, and so have I for, for many years. And I, you know, I read on Wikipedia that he happens to be a Republican. So, so yeah, it's only when the artists get uh, annoyingly extreme in their beliefs that uh, I'll tend to... Uh, exile them from my collection. Now there are five artists on my list of permanent banishments and exiles from my music collection, uh, and of course I will explain to you why each of those artists is on the list. The first one on my list is Morrissey. Now the Smiths are one of those uh, artists from the 80s that I basically overlooked, uh, again not for any particular reason, just that my comparatively small musical appetite at the time was getting all that it needed. And so I just didn't have any, have any compelling reason to listen to the Smiths music. And well, in recent years, I've found out that it's just as well that I didn't uh, establish any uh, emotional connection to the Smiths. Because, well, if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, uh, you know, more power to you. God bless you. You know, I mean, your your diet revolves around, I mean, your entire lifestyle revolves around your diet. So if you have the moral commitment to change what you eat, um, you know, based on your beliefs, hey, as I said, you know, God love you, more power to you. It's just, you don't have to be an asshole about it, really. I mean, Morrissey has done everything from comparing meat eating to Nazism, really original, and cannibalism and pedophilia, really, to, uh, to trivializing the 2011 Norway attacks as being nothing compared to what the fast food industry does. And I mean, hey, don't get me wrong, I'm one of the millions and millions of people out there who love animals, but can compartmentalize and separate animals in a petting zoo or whatever from animals on the dinner plate. So, you know, just don't badmouth me or crucify me because of it. Uh, honestly, you know, some of the stuff that Morrissey does, and he's done far more outlandish things since then, probably one or two as, I've, as I'm doing this video. But yeah, Morrissey is one of those smug, self-righteous guys who just makes me want to tie him to a chair and force him to watch me eat a medium-rare steak. Honestly. You know? Moving on. 
Uh, the second artist on my list is Ted Nugent. You gotta love Ted. He's a real piece of work. Uh, I mean, to call President Obama a chimpanzee and a subhuman mongrel is one thing, uh, but uh, to practically defend apartheid by saying that all men are not created equal, you know, that's another. And then, of course, he goes and spouts off on Islam, and by doing so, shining a really bright light on how very, very little he knows about it. But here's the capper. He called the Parkland school shooting survivors soulless, mushy-brained liars. Really. If you're a so-called mature adult who is verbally attacking young people less than a third your age who have just endured a horrifically violent event in which some of their friends have died, you have no place on these shelves. Ever. Ever. That's... Doesn't sit well with me, you know? Okay, gotta move on from that. Next on my list is reggae artist Buju Banton. And no, I don't care if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. Uh, he is on the list because of what is probably the most outright homophobic song ever to exist, a song called Boom Bye Bye. And uh, some people say that the lyrics are just metaphorical or artistic license or whatever, but when you read the translations from the original Jamaican patois, it's about shooting gay people in the head. I mean, you know, there's nothing metaphorical about that, honestly. Uh, now, supposedly in 2006, I think it was, he and many other reggae artists signed the Reggae Compassionate Act, which was a an official renunciation of hateful and homophobic and misogynistic, etc., lyrics in artists' rap songs, or, uh, excuse me, reggae songs. But Less than two years later, he had reneged on several of the clauses in the contract. He was performing Boom Bye Bye on stage again. And honestly, less than two years later, he had, he claimed that he had never signed it. So, you know, that's enough to just write him off. And honestly, the per pervasive homophobia in Jamaican and Caribbean culture is one reason why I'm just not much into reggae music at all. Uh, except for the, you know, the truly mainstream artists like, you know, Bob Marley and UB40. You know, I'm, I'm just afraid that I'm going to, you know, unwittingly end up supporting a homophobic artist. So, but yeah, that's the reason for uh, Buju being on the list. And uh, yeah, never have considered him for purchase and I never will. Next on my list is Kanye West. Where do you start with Kanye, really? Do you start with the extreme arrogance, like uh, interrupting Taylor Swift's acceptance speech at the Grammys, or whining like a spoiled nine-year-old every time he or somebody he, does, he likes doesn't win an award? Or should I start maybe with the totally baffling political remarks that he made, like suggesting blacks were slaves by choice, or, or his calls to repeal the 13th Amendment? That's the amendment that outlawed slavery, by the way, in case you weren't keeping up. Uh, or his otherwise completely bewildering support of Donald Trump? Or maybe we should go with the ridiculous self-importance. I mean, amongst many other things, his album titles, Yeezus, Yandi. Gee, he doesn't think highly of himself, does he? So honestly, and of course he does apologize about all, for all these things, but, you know, just a few days afterwards so that he can reel in a little bit more attention on the internet. And then he'll disappear for, oh, a few weeks, a month maybe, and then he'll do, some, do something just as stupid or probably way stupider than all the other things he'd done put together. So, But uh, yeah, that, that's his pattern, and, uh, and he still gets tons and tons of attention. That's what completely baffles me about it. Uh, so yeah, no thanks, Kanye. The world is paying way too much attention to you as it is. Uh, I'm not going to. Okay, now last, but in every way least, on my list is Pat Boone. Now we could talk about the garden variety, conservative, nutso stuff that he's done, like comparing LGBTQ activists to terrorists, or calling liberalism a cancer, or believing in and perpetuating all of the completely debunked conspiracy theories about Obama being a Muslim and born in Kenya and uh, fluent in Arabic and on and on and on. But no. The thing that really tipped it for me, the thing that really pushed it, pushed it over the edge for me, was what he did to Little Richard. Now, I have to warn you, the video you're about to see could be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Oh, 
cookie is the re. Her little Susie is the gal for me. Who's Rudy? Oh, Rudy. Great sense of rhythm he had there, wasn't it? Anyway, yeah, that's, uh, I'm sorry you had to see that, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that was actually a uh, fairly common practice back in the 50s. Uh, black songwriters' work was uh, basically commandeered by the white record industry, uh, where they were given no credit for it, and they were recorded and performed by white artists, and in some cases, and believe it or not, this was the case with Tutti Frutti, Pat Boone's version was actually more successful at first than Little Richard's version. So uh, if that isn't scary, I don't know what is. But anyway, that was the 50s uh, record in industry for you before uh, before the black artists really got the respect that they deserved and eventually, well, more or less, received. So, but anyway, that concludes my list. I am starting to lose my voice, sorry. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this list. I hope you were enlightened by it. Um, and, and, and again, I, I don't want to, you know, I try not to burst anybody's bubble. Uh, if you like these artists, and if you can overlook these um, flaws in their character that I can't, then hey, more power to you. I won't hold it against you. You know, and like I said in the beginning of the video, sometimes you just love the music that you love for no logical reason. So, but anyway, as I said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, your thoughts, comments, uh, any artists that you know of that uh, should maybe have belonged on this list, let me know in the comments. And uh, if you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. I would very much appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, as I said in the beginning, life's too short to be a music snob.